Hey guys, what's going on? So before I fly over to Taipei for Computex 2018, I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of my portable video editing setup that I'll be taking over there with me. And also the camera and lenses that I'll be taking as I do get asked on that quite a bit. And it's been a while since I've talked about camera gear or anything like that. So first up, let's talk about that. My pride and joy, the trusty Sony a6300, which has shot all of the footage on the channel since around July last year. It shoots oversampled 4K at 30 FPS thanks to that 6K sensor, and it also shoots 1080p at 120 FPS for slow motion. But honestly, the 1080p footage does leave quite a lot to be desired and does require a lot of denoising in post, so I usually stick to 4K. And the 4K is definitely nice, and in my opinion, it's pretty much uncanny tested in this price range of around 900 US dollars and that's with the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens that I've got on it. If there's one limitation on this camera though it's definitely the battery life as the ones that come with the camera are only 1000 milliamp hours and are only good for about 30 minutes of shooting continuously. So for long days of shooting you'll definitely want to be picking up third party options like these ones. These are 2000 milliamp hour batteries which you can find on eBay and I've got to say these have been an absolute lifesaver. Now another drawback of the Sony a6 6300 is that it doesn't have any video stabilization like some of the larger mirrorless cameras like the Panasonic GH5 or Sony a7 III. So if you are shooting handheld, you definitely want to make sure that you're shooting with stabilized lenses if you're not shooting in slow motion. So I have accumulated a few lenses during my time working with the Sony a6300 and I will be taking my favorite three lenses for handheld shooting. The first one is the trusty Sony 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens that I mentioned before, which I honestly don't find myself using quite a lot these days, but it definitely makes for a great run and gun lens on a budget. The zoom range is fairly large from a wide 16 millimeters to a narrower 50 millimeters, and this is effectively 24 to 75 on the APS-C sensor. This lens is stabilized, which is the main reason that I'll be bringing it over and using it as probably my primary lens, but the aperture is unfortunately quite small across the entire zoom range, only going as large as f3.5 at 16 millimeters and f5.6 at 50 millimeters, and that's why I'll be taking two other lenses with me which I'll be using as backups. So hopefully I'll have the time to switch over to them because these are two really good lenses and these are the Sigma 16mm f1.4 and the Sony 50mm f1.8. The 16mm Sigma isn't stabilized but it is wide enough to not notice any jittering or slight movement and luckily the more zoomed in 50mm from Sony is stabilized and gives absolutely beautiful and smooth shots at f1.8. I took this with me to Intel Extreme Masters a couple weeks ago and it makes for those perfect shots where you're aiming to isolate the subject from the rest of the show floor, so I'm hoping that'll come in handy at Computex. The mic I'll be taking is the Rode VideoMic Pro, just for some picking up of background audio and maybe if there's an important announcement, but I don't plan on doing any interviews or anything like that, so this should be sufficient. Overall, a really good microphone. I love the high pass filter to cut out some of those low frequencies, and the 20 dB boost makes this an excellent mic if you're filming in quiet environments while using the onboard audio from your camera, as that way you don't have to increase the gain that much in post, which would otherwise result in a lot of noise. All of that footage needs to be edited on something though, so I recently picked up the Microsoft Surface Book 2. It's the 13 inch model with the i7-8650U, which can turbo up to 4.2 gigahertz, and it's also got a dedicated GPU in it as well. Only a GTX 1050, but that's more than enough to reap the benefits of CUDA accelerated tasks like video editing and exporting. The 1050 is also good enough for some light gaming as well, if you don't mind dropping the resolution down to 1080p. So I picked up an Xbox one wireless controller if I ever feel like gaming on it, and single player titles like Witcher 3 and Project Cars 2 should serve as a nice backup for those long flights. Of course though, the main reason I picked this up as opposed to a gaming laptop is for the experience when it comes to video editing and other tasks like writing scripts and creating charts in Excel. The 3000 by 2000 pixel sense screen is incredibly sharp and reasonably color accurate as well. The build quality is unreal with that sturdy iconic hinge that the Surface Book is known for, and the keyboard is the best keyboard that I've ever used on a laptop so far. It can also be used as a tablet, making it a fairly versatile piece of hardware, 
offering a very joyful experience when it comes to general media consumption. Keep in mind though, if you're going to be using it like this, that you will be disconnecting away from the GTX 1050 in the performance base. So keep the use cases for this mode for light tasks only. More on the video editing side, the microphone I'll be taking for recording audio like this is the Rode NT USB, which I use as my daily driver. It's powered by USB, which definitely helps with portability and ease of use. Not much else to say about this one, just a super reliable and easy to use condenser microphone. I will also be taking my Logitech G703 wireless mouse to edit videos as fast as possible, because as good as the trackpad is on the Surface Book 2, I definitely prefer using a mouse when it comes to editing videos as fast as possible to try and meet a deadline. So that's pretty much everything that I'll be taking over with me other than a few little bits and pieces. So if you have any questions, don't forget to drop those down below and everything you'll see will also be down in the description if you wanna check out prices and stuff like that. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all over at Computex.